So today we are going to read a poem. Some of you may remember, Si Bei Gu Shan Xia, A Mooring Under North Fort Hill. Uh, this is a Tang poem uh, that from uh, 7th, 8th century and well known for really uh, depicting a scene of Chinese Lunar New Year and welcome the spring. Uh, so the 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 poet's name is Wang Wan. If you are interested, we have a recording on China Institute's YouTube video uh, list that when we had a explanation and the entire session about this poem. Uh, so Chun Xuan, if you could uh, post the link uh, later, that would be great. If anyone is interested, I would invite you to. Uh, watch the recording after today's session. Um, but now I will hand it over to Chun Xuan. She will lead the reader aloud. Uh, you can follow her to read. And afterwards, uh, Su Lao Shi will continue with her calligraphy session. How the Chun Xuan? Okay. Uh, hi, Chun Xuan. Some of you may meet me in the calligraphy meetup. And by the way, Chun is also the character means spring. And it's a great honor to be here. And now we are going to read. First, I'm going to read the whole, first I'm going to read the whole poem. And uh, now you can listen the pronunciation. And then we will read together sentence by sentence. Now I'll go first. Okay, and this is the whole poem, and then we will read together sentence by sentence. And now, if you like, you can turn on your microphone and we can read it together. Okay. Now let's get started. Ke Lu Qing Shan Wai. Ke Lu Qing Shan Wai. Yin Zhou Lu Shui Xian. Xin Zhou Lu Shui Xian. Tao Ping Liang Ang Kuo. Chiaoping 江春入旧年江春入旧年江书何处达江书何处达归雁洛阳边归雁洛阳边江归雁洛阳边江归雁洛阳边江归雁洛阳边江归雁洛阳边江归雁洛阳边江归雁洛阳边江归雁洛阳
，朝廷表判过，更正一番玄。海日生残叶，海日生残叶。江春入旧年，江春入旧年。江苏何处达？江苏何处达？归雁洛阳边，归雁洛阳边。边。Okay, this is the whole point. Thank you for all of you. Now I'll stop sharing the screen. Thank you, Chunxian. I also posted the uh, recording from a previous Lunch and Learn. Uh, with the uh, reading aloud as well as some explanations. So if you are interested, feel free to check that link later. Uh, but and now I will turn the screen to Su Lao Shi to continue our calligraphy session. I think we're on a different style today. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will show my screen first. All right. Hi, everyone. Okay, let me adjust my okay. Okay, um, hello. So my name is Isu and also known as Eva. I'm a professional calligrapher based in New York. And I've been teaching and learning um Chinese calligraphy for 20 more years. And now I've been uh, dedicated to teaching calligraphy for years. And I also create my own Chinese artworks, including like Chinese painting and calligraphy. So today is the third session of Lunch and Learn in the theme of Chinese calligraphy. First time we've talked about the, the basics, for example, the writing tools, the, the body posture, the, the finger positions. And last time we've talked about the, the introduced the seal script uh, during the long history of Chinese calligraphy development. Seal script it is the first that appeared. So we introduced the seal script and also we wrote the Fu, the fortune, together because we were in the season of Chinese New Year. So today we will continue to explore the scripts. And that's the second script I would like to introduce is the clerical script. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So this is the development line of all five kinds of scripts. And each picture I've selected is the most typical representative one. So we've we've already talked about them one by one thoroughly uh, in last session. So today we will just take a review. The first one is the seal script, which you, as you can see, it's uh, in the first line, as the first in the whole line. Um, the shape is like a tall rectangular shape while it transformed, transformed to a shorter size or shorter um, rectangular shape until it's being the clerical script. Seal script in Chinese is zhuan shu, the seal, the zhuan means carve or seal. It's like directly translated the second one is clerical script, which is refers which refers to li shu, and the third is rounding script is xing shu. The fourth is regular script as kai shu. The last one cursive script is cao shu. So all these um like most categorized um styles that is like inside the scope of Chinese calligraphy. Also, there are other um, styles that cannot be categorized.
categorized into this, but they, the, those are minorities. So I'm not showing on the in this page. Okay, so this is the character of Shu in five kinds of scripts I wrote correspondingly. Um, as you can see in the seal script, it has, it, this is a small seal script, which I, uh, uh, we talked about that to distinguish the large seal and versus small seal. Um, this is the example of small seal script, and it has the tall rectangle shape, as I said just now. And the stroke is rather very uh, steady and in the same thickness. And when it, it comes to the clerical, the shape changed. The character is shorter, and there's there's still the round start and end um, in the round shape, which means it has the same technique, the same writing technique as the seal, but it has something special. So today we will introduce this special stroke that typically happened in clerical. Let's see. In writing, as I always want to mention, if you swipe in on a paper with a calligraphy brush pen, that does not mean calligraphy. So um, in each kind of style or script, we have different regulations or different uh, principles that we need to follow. I had these three examples of one single stroke we call it hen, which is refers to um, um, horizontal line. So in regular script, it looks like this in the first left side. In the clerical, which I'm showing you here, is a typical clerical style hen, which has a curve, like from like a bridge, right? Like a bridge from left side to right side. So and also the the start shape we call it tan tou, translated as the silkworm head, the same as in the seal style. It has a like rather a round shape or little square shape. It's like a silkworm head. Where in the clerical style we have a the ending shape like goose tail. So in in clerical we call it tan tou yan wei, translated as silkworm head and goose tail. So that only happened in clerical style. And we will learn to write it out today uh, later. Okay. So these three are very typical or classical examples that practitioners will need to follow copy when we learn the clerical script. Um, before Han Dynasty, so Han Dynasty is like between uh, 200 BC until 280, 400 years or so. And before Han is the Qing Dynasty, which the seal script is the official style in Qing, which is before uh, around 200 uh, BC. So actually in Qing Dynasty, the this kind of style is already being invented and used by clerks. So it's called clerical style. Used by clerks as a type of shorthand before they they write out the final in seal script as the official document. So mm -hmm. it's being used and invented in Qing, but until Han Dynasty, it become the replacement of seal script to become the official script for imperial documents. When we talk about Li Shu Li, usually we, we comes with Han Li, Han Li. Han means Han Dynasty, Li means clerical. So Han Li is like the because clerical script becomes the the official script in Han Dynasty. So that can represent the the whole style happened in Han. So we call it Han Li. And this kind of style is renowned for its um, elegant style and has been highly praised by uh, 
later calligraphers throughout the centuries. These three examples are the most popular uh, examples among like the, all the calligraphy practitioners. If we not we want to learn clerical script, we would like to choose one of it to to follow and copy to imitate the shape or the the techniques. Everything we will take the uh all these three are still rubbings of the, the the tomb tombstone, and each of them has the name of a person. For, for example, the first one is the still rubbing of Yi Ying, which is Yi Ying Bei. The second is still rubbing of Cao Quan, so the person's name is Cao Quan. The third is still rubbing of Zhang Qian, which is Zhang Qian's tomb. So the, the characters are carved on the tomb of Zhang Qian. That's how it means. Um, let's take the second one, the, the middle one, Cao Quan Bei as an example. The original still date uh, is like uh, Eastern Han in uh, 185. Um, 185, yes, it was discovered, I think it's in Ming Dynasty, Ming Dynasty like uh, 16th century. It was being discovered on earth, this, this uh, tombstone, I mean. Then the, this kind of style is being discovered. And the content of the whole passage, this is only a part of the whole passage. The whole whole passage is, is the story of it, the still, because the tomb is in memory of Cao Quan, the person. So the whole story is describing his whole life, his name, where he's from, what rank he became as an officer. So basically his whole life story. Usually this kind of tomb is um uh, the the court the emperor the emperor customized these kind of tombs for officials with honor. Sometimes uh, he's, he's a general and sometimes uh he's a minister or something like that. So we see the black background with the white color character. If you see the classic examples like this, mostly it, it is the rubbing. So how the rubbing is being produced. For example, I want to erect a, a tombstone for Cao Quan, right? So I will, the family of Cao, Cao family will hire a calligrapher, calligrapher to write on the stone first, to write on the stone with a brush pen. then. I, I will hire a stone cutter to trace and cut out to carve the the the, the calligraphy on the stone. Then the, the stone will be erected like beside or right in the area of his tomb, the Cao Quan's tomb. And later, when the years goes by, people find the stone and uh, dig it out. And then we do rubbings. To to take all the passage or or the all the information down for people to see and to spread to have people know what's it about. So that's basically how uh still rubbing is being produced and it's uh very normal and common in in, in Chinese calligraphy as an example. So uh the process is like very official. Like you only in court or um it's a formal occasion. But what is, is the calligraphy look like in like people, not like in that not a officer, what the handwriting looks like. I selected this picture for you to have a review. So this is the uh, example of handwriting, which is Ju Yan Han Jian. This is being written on a wood, wood or bamboo. You can see the brushwork is rather bold and expressive and it's unrestrained and the, the space in between is not that consistent together, the, the same. And the structure is naturally formed, but it still has the same similarities like uh, the page I showed you previously. It, it has the flat shape. It has a shorter rectangular shape. 
as well. But this is more casual style. So it's not that strictly follow the regulations as I just what I just showed you. And the third I would like to show you is the late centuries style of uh, clerical style. What's it look like? So these two are also handwritings. These are clerical works in late or modern centuries, which is like um, 18, 19, uh, 17 century. And these two are rather different. Actually, the left side one is more calming, right? It's more steady and more, um, you know, in the same space and there's no stroke with high, uh, high speed, but, the right one is writing with speed, but it's still the clerical style because it shares the same regulations. Um, to see all these clerical styles as a whole through, although although they look different, like the the first the tomb still rubbing, the the handwriting on bamboo in Han Dynasty and the later dynasties like late centuries, they look different, but they share many distinctive similarities among them. And they are all massively different from Zhuan Shu, the seal script. That is because, because um, the change happened in Han, right? We know we know now Han Dynasty, we discover all in, oh, the clerical script become the most official script in Han Dynasty. So why do, do you, um, you can take a guess about why it changed so massively different from the style before Han. So there's a person named Cai Yong. He is a Chinese uh, calligrapher, critics, um, politician, and also uh, a an, an writer of uh, Eastern Han Dynasty. There's a famous saying from him that in Chinese it's called Wei Bi Ran. This is a traditional Chinese word wording. I translate it as the softness of brush pen's hair creates all the magic. Here, 奇怪, in Chinese, actually, it translates direct, di directly as um, strange things. What it refers to, I, I call it magic here. So it refers to different kinds of contradictory relationship that you see in the, the calligraphy artwork because the uh, brush pen is softer and more flexible in hand and see the, the softness, right? The, it showed here. Um, with the flexibility, there are more kinds of techniques can be applied into the writing of Chinese calligraphy and more movements can be made like, and which can bring more visual effects. For example, you can create, um, they can thin the different, the just contrast, right? The dryness and wetness, the like the width and narrowness. So that's like contradictory relationship that you see more happened in Han Dynasty because the brush pen, the tool changed. It, it, it also on the other side, the softness of the brush pen also brings more ink. It can absorb more ink. So that's like another dimension of artistic element which can create all the change or, or the visual effects different appearances that you see here as uh, the, the clerical style, more than seal. All right, so to sum up the regulations here, oh, this is Tan Tou Yan Wei I just talked about, uh, the silk worm head and goose tail. So usually, but the, this kind of sig signature shape, signature horizontal line only happen once in, in in single character, which means there won't be two goose tails in one single character. That's the uh, regulation as well. 
Um, it has a concealed tip at both ends, which means Tang Feng. Last time we uh, there's just uh, asked the question, what is Tang Feng? So this is concealed tip. As when you see the shorter uh, horizontal line, it has actually has the same technique as the seal script, which is ha which which has the seal concealed tips at both ends, and the thickness become changing, right? Compared with seal, the stroke is rather steady in the same thickness. However, in clerical, you will need to use lift up and pressing down techniques to create the changing of thickness. And let's see the structure or layout. Uh, as I said before, uh, the clerical style has a wide rectangle shape and most horizontally extended. Usually if there is a na, if uh, uh, the na stroke is from the top left to the right bottom, the na usually extended very long that beyond the shape of the whole character. It's like very long tail. Uh, let me see if I can find an example here. Yeah, like this. So it's been very widely extended for the whole shape of the character. Okay, so that's the regulation or characteristics of clerical style. We make use of the flexible flexibility and softness of the brush pen to, to press down and lift up, which I will demonstrate later for the the techniques okay so um, before today's practice because last session we've talked about chinese new year uh in, we were during the the season of chinese new year i showed you popular elements that how we celebrate during the festival and we we see some examples of calligraphy couplets and different versions of fu the fortune the character Today, I will introduce another festival which just happened last weekend, which is the Lantern Festival. In Chinese, we call it Shang Yuan Jie or Yuan Xiao Jie. It, it is um, last weekend, uh, it's February 24th, Saturday, celebrated on the 15th day of the first month in the lunisolar Chinese calendar. So on the on this calendar, we would know exactly which day is the full moon day. So this is the 15th of every month is the full moon day. So Shang Yuan Jie or Yuan Xiao Jie is the first full moon of the whole year. So that's why we celebrate it. On this day, we had family reunion. We have beautiful lanterns hung up on the street or at home. Uh, we ate Tang Yuan together. So this is the special food we usually uh, had in during this festival. It is sticky rice with a filling inside, sometimes sesame or meat or sugar. Something sweet is very popular during uh, for kids. So we like to eat this kind of food. And I also like to show you this painting. This is a part of a Chinese painting. It's a hand scroll with like a six meter length describing the emperor Xianzong uh, having fun in Lantern Festival during Ming Dynasty in 15th century. Um, as you can see in the, on, the, on the left side, there's a, there's a street peddler selling the lantern to kids. Like this kid is like asking for permission from, for, for, from this adult. And this is a typical dress style in Ming. So they all dress like skirts here. Um, this child is holding a, a, a lantern that's shaped in elephant. So elephant is a symbol of peace in Chinese. There's a cheng yu called tai ping you xiang. So xiang, the elephant, represents peace. And I see this picture, this part, the, this person is holding a lantern in the shape of toad. The toad 
uh, the the animal it it, it I mean uh, bringing fortune or gold is a symbol of gold in Chinese culture. When you see when we when you see, when you were in a, a Chinese restaurant, sometimes you can see a toad ornament on the counter and with a coin inside of his mouth. So that's like a toad um to to bring more fortune for for the owner. And on this in this picture, there's there's a high, very high wall, and all these circles are lanterns. They they are hung up very high, and the whole city will be as bright as like having daylight in the evening. And people do acrobatics performance and fireworks to celebrate the 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 festival. So today we will practice the this character. This is Yuan. Yuan, Yuan or Yuan Xiao Yuan. So it means first or origin. Yuan, Yuan Shou, like it can combine with different characters for different meanings. Also, it's the unit of Chinese currency, Yuan, like a dollar in America. Uh, let's see the example for today. So, Yuan in three different kinds of script looks like this in seal this is only for review i can take uh um, let's see if we have enough time for we, we i will write out the seal but today we will focus on the clerical first then we compared it with the regular let's have a try of these two different kinds of scripts of yuan then we will see if we have time to to do the seal okay so that's a lot before the practice. Let's get ready with me. I will stop sharing the, the, the slides now. You can take a picture of the example just in case you don't know what the example look like after I close the, I, I stop sharing the, the page. Okay. All right, so I'll stop sharing now and transform the, the 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 camera to me so let's get ready together all right can everyone see me Chen Xuan, would you please uh help to spotlight or uh somehow i can everyone can see me clearly okay wait a minute thank you okay oh i look big here all right Okay, let's um grab the brush pen first. Gather get together all the tools. Let's see how we can do it together here. For those who is first time to using calligraphy brush pen, I will show you uh, how to hold it first. So you can do it with me. First, we have three fingers to grab it. And then put your palm down to take it closer to the body of the, the pen. And at the same time, the last two fingers will be as a support of the body like this. You can make movements with the last two and the first two will be doing this movement. The last two will be support. So the four fingers will have different function when holding the brush pen. And at the same time, your palm is facing down and the wrist is putting down. You can put your wrist on the table because today's practice will won't be very large character. You uh, don't need to like lift up the whole arm. You can put your elbow uh, first, then you will see if you need to put your wrist down. You can watch me doing it later. Um, so that's the, usually we, we, uh, grab the pen in on one third of the whole pen length. And that's we, what we usually hold it and pay attention to the rest. That's always, uh, the problem when, when students having, sometimes they do it like this, this is wrong and put it down like this. Okay. So this is how we hold the brush pen. Then let me change my camera here. Okay. So we have the 
example and the paper. This is a practice paper for Chinese calligraphy. And this is my ink dish. You can use whatever container you have, ink dish, ink stone, or um, the, the, any container that you have the ink. Today I will use the liquid ink, not the uh, ink stick. And I have a water just beside the, the ink container. So what I will do, it, this is a dry, dry a brush pen. So to initialize it, I will need to wet it first. So I put down all the hair to immerse into the water and then remove the extra water to keep it in the same shape as the original. Okay, I'll remove the water bowl here. Then to dip the ink. So you will put all hair in to let the hair absorb the ink thoroughly. Then you will need to use the edge to remove the excessive ink and create the sharp tip. Very sharp tip, and you can see, yeah, like this. Yeah, so no ink dropped, right? So this is the like good to go condition. Do not absorb more so it will drop the ink on the paper that will be messy and do not uh, remove much to keep it too dry. So that's like, uh, you need to feel how it goes. So this is the condition I would like to start. Okay, let's see. Let's practice the, this, the, the character Yuan in clerical. So the first stroke is using the conceal tip as I introduced this, uh, just now, the same as the seal. Although you see the thickness is different, but the technique is the same. So I will do it here in first joke. You can see me doing it first, then you can copy it from here, from there. Okay, so the conceal tip, you will need to make reverse turn and drag to the right, keep it steady, and make a round turn again as the ending. So this is a thick joke in clerical script, not a goose tail one, the regular short version of the horizontal line. Goose tail only happens in a long horizontal line, okay. So I'll do the second stroke. It's a bit longer than the first one, still the concealed shape. And then to the right and make a turn. All right. And then we we'll do the pier here from top top right to the bottom left. It's a bit thinner, so we lift up a little bit and move to the left side. The last stroke is rather important because it is the it shows the style of clerical. Move downward first, then make a turn here and go thicker. So this is another sign, another version of goose tail. We lift up slowly and create the goose tail shape. That's Yuan in clerical style. I will do uh, the signature shape, the signature horizontal line in clerical here. So the concealed tip going upward and down like a bridge, then the th most thickness part, and then lift up a goose tail. So this is the seal quam, this is the goose tail. This, oh, this is yi yuan. <laughs> that means one yuan, <laughs> you know. Okay, Um, this is the most signature shape 
as I mentioned, Tan Tou Yan Wei. In clerical style, we can practice this character with me together. Pay attention to the whole shape. As I mentioned, it's a flat rectangular shape instead of a square. You see, so this in steel, I put it beside it because I want to, you to see the, the difference between these two. It's very tall, this is very short, and this is thin and this is wide. So that's the difference between the, the styles. Okay. Anybody already practiced? You can show me on the screen that you can share your um, opinions or anything on the, in the comments. If you have any, any questions, feel free to ask in the comment box. Oh, I see uh, Bernada, if I say it correctly. Oh, you're doing great, yes. Oh, Elizabeth, yes, I see you. Very nice. Eric, yeah, I see that. I see you had a lot of practices of the signature. Very nice. I see a question here one second. Is there a concealed tip on the pie? Also, the second hen in the sample has a sharpness to it. Is that concealed tip? Okay, very good question of Sher from Sherman Lau. Okay. Mm -hmm. So these two looks different, right? You see, it, it is more round and the second is more squared like, like this. These two are all concealed uh, start with different movements. For example, I can control it with rather round like this or squared like this. So it's all concealed. It uh, As long as you move from a different direction of the stroke, it means concealed. I will show you here. So the stroke is from left side to right side, right? So when I start, it's not from left side to right, right side. Actually, it's from left, from right to left first. Then we go to right. So that's a concealed. And also the same as ending part. Ending part, if I go back to a opposite direction of the stroke, then it means you hui bi. That's how you conceal the tip. Wei feng. The tip is the bi feng. So thank you. It so it looks like you have a you always have the concealed tip, the change in direction action, but you can shape it so it's not just round, like in the first hum. Yeah. Uh. So actually, the if the round or not is controlled, it, you can control the shape of the start. So, but in actually writing. We are not like intentionally, we want it round or very squared or round. So both are okay when you see it in your artwork. So it's that intentionally to be go this uh, either one. But in when we imitating, when we when we are copying, we will need to copy the most of it. So sometimes we, I, I, I will go square or shape or the round shape as accurate as I can. Great, thank you. And then the first part was, uh, so I couldn't tell in the pied, it looked, I couldn't tell if you ended with a concealed tip or not. And is there, is there also a rule there as well in terms of whether the pied typically will always have a concealed tip or not? Mm, the pied here, in clerical, we have it, but just slightly backward a little bit will be fine. It, this is different from these two. So in steel, we will do the complete movement of what shows here. But while in the regular, the pier becomes like this. No go back at all. So in clerical, it's like in between. 
You know what I mean? So you can come back just a little bit to conceal it because to avoid the sharpness, there's no sharpness in the in the clerical. All right. But that, mm -hmm. it's just, uh, sorry, one more. This sounds like a general rule is that except for the goose tail, you'll always have a concealed tip in clerical, except maybe it's very small. Yeah, that would be correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, I see other questions. Let me see. Uh, Taiping Yo Xiang Yo is Yo. This is Yo. Yo, may Yo the Yo. We have or not have Yo. This character. Yes. Oh, already. Chen Xiang already answered that for me. Um, okay. So let's. Can, uh, Vanessa said, could you show how you did the lower left stroke on the Yuan again? So, so the, about the shape. So I picked this character. This is from a uh, Qing Dynasty artist. So in actually art creating process, we are not that strict about, like I just said just now, Either one is fine as as long as you use the technique. So this is a round shape. When we do the more, if I want to create the the square shape intentionally, I will need to press down first, then go to the right. It will be like squared. All right. Okay. So okay, we have more time. So I will write the regular script for you to see here, Yuan. So the regular, when you compare it with the clerical, the Hen becomes upward. It has different angle compared with cler uh, the clerical. Clerical is rather horizontal or sometimes it has a slightly curve compared with seal. So it's like um not very much alike, but in regular, it's very uh, obvious it goes upward, the Hen. And the P and Shu Wan Go. Let's write it here. This is not a concealed tip. Let's see how it looks like when, when I do the movement. So I press down directly and move to the right. But the ending, I still need to conceal it. Second stroke. Press down directly, move to the right. You are ending size here. Then the pier. Start from here. Press down and gradually lift up and make the sharpness as the ending. The last stroke is very difficult. There are three parts of it. First, to compare it with the clerical, you see the angle is different. This one is rather is straighter than this one because it has the angle like to the left side. And then come back. This is also have a curvedness as well. Then the, the hook is going this way instead of uh, to the right, right side. So let's do it here. Go to the left side, go thicker and round, make a back and go up. So it's pointy, it's pointy and pointing to the uh, this direction instead of this. That's the difference between these two characters. Oh, and also I would like to mention, so next time we will talk more about regular scripts. I put it here because it's more common when we see the Chinese character nowadays. So we will have a direct um, idea of how the difference look like. And uh, so I would like to mention before next session, this is a more squared shape compared with clerical. So the shape is different. Uh, is taller, but shorter, still tall, shorter than the seal. Okay, so I will do the seal script for you. Last time we 
practiced Wu, which has more strokes and more complicated shape and the, uh, the structure than Yuan. Yuan is like simple as only four strokes together. So I would do it here to show, although it's very thin, but we will do it slowly and a little bit thicker than you can see. Round turn, round turn. Second line, longer than the first. Very horizontally and keep it steady as the same thickness shows here. Okay, the next one is a uh, curved. You will need to move your wrist or your elbow. I, I was moving my whole arm actually doing this joke because it's long. It's long enough to, to move the whole arm. If it's a very small size character, for example, if I do it here, just this size, I would just move fingers, no wrist and no elbow movement. So if you need to move, whether you need to move the elbow or the arm, depending on the size of the character you are writing. The last stroke. Take a turn. Very smoothly and end with the wrong shape. This is the seal script of Yuan. I see a question here from Paul Chu Fang. Is this brush soft here, stiff here, or a combo? Actually, it's a combo. So it has a stiff inside, uh, inside here and there's a cover of the soft hair, so it's a combo, it's a mix. Okay, so let's Take a look of all these three characters. To wrap up, this is the signature shape. It can represent the the num the one number one in 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 uh in Chinese the the regular script is the e. It's the same. It's a 一个横 represents e number one. Okay, so that's the signature shape of clerical. When you see it. Mostly it's a clerical style artwork of Chinese calligraphy. And this is the clerical style of Yuan. We've talked about Zhong Yuan Jie and or Yuan Xiao Jie. This, this is the Yuan we are using. And it shares the same techniques with the seal. But the shape is very, very different. This is the shorter version. This is the higher version of Yuan. And but in regular, when it developed to regular script, it become a square and until nowadays, it's all squared characters. So that's different, there's three kinds of uh, Yuan. At last, I will do the one more time about the signature hen again for you to see. Here. You start with a concealed tip, go upward, downward, press down harder, and lift up gradually. So 
when it comes down, or oh, this, this is like the center of the bridge. When it comes down, this reaches the most thickness part here, and it is it shares the same uh, horizontal axis here with the start, and then go upward. This style in different, uh, this uh, stroke in different style can look a little bit different by the same technique. For example, this is in Zhang Tianbei style of clerical, which has a more squared start and a flatter shape of the curve, curveness. So these are all clerical, but in different style. In Tao Quan, I will show you one more of Tao Quan. Tao Quan is thinner and slender and with more longer curveness. So that's all different styles. Okay. Very much for today. Thank you, Su Laoshi. Yeah, I am practicing. So into your <laughs> instruction. Thank you so much. <laughs> really enjoy. And I can uh, see a lot yeah. of uh, of our participants also appreciate your detailed explanation and the demonstration. Pleasure. Okay. Yeah, this is a wonderful time uh, spent together. And also, I, I want to remind, uh, I know a lot of uh, participants also are taking Chinese language classes with us. Uh, we are having our early bird coming up next Tuesday, uh, March 5th, for the spring semester. So I would encourage you to sign up our classes before that day to enjoy some discount. Uh, some of the uh, participants also asking um, learning Chinese. We do have beginner Chinese language classes online. Uh, so you can check uh, our website to see the classes. Um, also, I want to uh, again invite all of you to come back next month uh, in April. We will continue with the calligraphy class with Su Lao Shi. Uh, for the season, we have April and May, uh, two more sessions to go. Um, and we do have recordings to uh, send out once ready as a follow up. Uh, and also, for your read aloud. Uh, we will stick around for one minute or two if you have any further questions. But for now, well, uh, have a nice weekend. 周末愉快，拜拜。周末愉快，谢谢小安。